we started seeing maps being drawn up that includes the Urobo nation as part of the Republic of Biafra. Now, these are maps that have been uh, drawn up by the IPOB and Masob uh, and this guy, the late, their latest hero. You get it right there. Now, let me just state this up front. Eh? Everyone has a right to agitate for their people. Nobody will sit down and say the Igbos do not have a right to agitate for themselves. The union we have today, the Nigerian union as it is right, the Nigerian project is not a perfect union. Everybody should strive to correct those imperfections. So I respect their right to self-determination. I respect their right to agitate on behalf of their people. What we will not countenance, you know, is for them without consulting the Urubu people to swore Mutu on their own, include the Robos as part of their map of the Republic of uh, Biafra. And what even made it all the more insulting to us as Robos is that unlike maybe Anioma, you know, that, that uh, maybe was part of uh, the Biafran Republic, are you getting it right? Uh, because of, uh, uh, I mean, I think that, that stakeholdership yes. and uh, kindredship, you know, with the robots, we don't have that. We were never part of the Republic of Biafra. We are not now. And we do not plan to be part of that. So that's what it's all about. So we're not fighting the evil people. You know, we respect their right to agitate. And frankly, if you ask me, this country has been unfair to them. But not just them alone. Even we. You must recall that Nigeria began with three regions. The north, the east, the west, and subsequently the midwest region. Indeed, the midwest region, which is today Delta and, and uh, Edo, which became Bendel, that is the only region that was constitutionally created. The others were by fiat. The northern region was by fiat from the colonialists. So too the west, so too the east. But as was created as a result of referendum by the people in a constitutional uh, manner. So I'm saying this for purpose of uh, uh, history. As we speak right now, the North, which was one region, is now is 17 states or 19 states. I don't know, so I think 19 states. It's now 19 states. The West, that was one region, is now uh, six states. The East, or Eastern region, that was one region, is now uh, five states. Why we, Midwest, that was one region, were only two states? Now, these have implications. How about the implications? The, between Edo and Delta, one region, we only have six senators. The North, that was one region, now has 19 times 3. That's 57 senators. You do the math. The West, that was a co-region with us, Midwest, now six states times three senators, making what? 18 senators. Why we, a co-equal region, at that time, we only have six senators. So I'm saying this, of course the Igbos have a right eh, to be angry and to be bitter. We too, here, in Bender, or Delta, they also have a right to be bitter. So when people are agitating, there's justification in the agitation, provided one, don't make it violent, and then two, consult. You, you cannot replace one tyranny with another tyranny. You know, we believe that at some point, uh, uh, everyone needs to calm down, we need to sit down and look into the reason for this agitation. We should be asking ourselves this question. This kind of agitation that we have today, did we have these agitations in pre Ironsi Nigeria? Or these agitations only came about post Ironsi Nigeria? Eh? I say this because this has ramifications. In pre-Iransi Nigeria, we're running a federal system of government with powers devolved to the regions. Before Iransi came with its decree 34, they're now more or less right there, uh, uh, turned the country uh, to, to a unitary uh, uh, system of government, taking all powers right there uh, to Abuja. Now, if you look at the last constitutional conference, the CONFAB, 
that was organized by uh, the Jonathan uh, administration. Most of these issues were addressed there. There are certain things we don't have to accept every recommendation of that confab. And frankly, I've never seen it all. But there are some good recommendations that they've made. The argument people are making is that nobody elected them, and therefore they're not in a position to uh, decide for the country, decide for the people when those that have the mandate are there. That's we, the elected representative of the people. And they are right to that extent. So to that extent, I would say, OK, yes, they've made their recommendations, but they didn't have the mandate. So bring the report to those of us who have the mandate. Let us sift through this. The one that we believe that we add value, that we help address the challenges that we have today, let us take them. The ones that do not address the challenges we have today, we set them aside. But at the end of the day, we have the mandate to look into this. There are some good things in that report. We should look into it. That's the only way we can address some of the challenges. If you ask me today, I have not seen that report, but I like to believe there was a, there was a recommendation for state creation. There's nothing wrong, for instance, in aligning the Igbos, if nothing else. On, I know we talk about equality of states, but you can actually make this argument based on equality of regions or equality of geopolitical zones. You know, let the Igbos have the uh, X number of states that will bring, make them equal, you know, with the other uh, uh, geopolitical zones. Even here in Delta, for instance, uh, if I recall, even the, the, the CONFAB recommend, recommended uh, the creation of, uh, of uh, an Ioma state. What is wrong with having that state created? Now, the only point I will make is this. The economy of this country right now cannot afford this multiplicity of states. But the moment people are made to understand that, yes, you want your state created for you, to the extent that there are administrative structures, no problem. But the funding will not come from you. You cannot create states and sit down and expect Abuja, you know, to be funding them. But if, like we did in the past, you know, when we had the three regions, where every state was competing against each other, where some had their peanuts, some had their cocoa, some had their, 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 their rubber and crude, some had coal, you're getting right here. If, if they not go back, See, there is no state in this country today that does not have one form of natural resource or the other. Every state is blessed. But because people are used to sitting down here, waiting for the end of the month, for a fact meeting to be called, to go to Abuja and collect a paycheck, you know, nobody now wants to explore uh, and exploit the resources they have uh, in their states. So the moment you make the center very, very unattractive, nobody wants to fight to go to Abuja anymore. They would rather want to fight to go to Asaba, or go to Benin, or go to Potakot. Because that would not be the epicenters right, of uh, uh, the political uh, uh, administration.